Hello everyone, welcome to the 12th video to beginner's guide on how to Revit. In this video, we will learn about materials and its terminologies. First, let's go to 3D by clicking this button right here. Next, let's turn off the shadows by clicking this one. Now, let's change this to fine and this one to consistent colors. Alright. Next, let's go to VV, go to Annotation, look for Grid, turn that off, Level, turn it off as well, what else, Section Box, alright, Apply, and OK. Now, no more unnecessary annotations. Let's go to Manage, then Materials, we'll focus on the basic and easier parts, like this project materials, for example. These are the default materials Revit has for us to use. First, let's use this button right here. This allows us to create a new material or duplicate a selected one. So let's make our own one for now. And here it is. If you right click the new material that we made, we're gonna get a couple of options. Let's use rename. We'll name this home-test. Okay. Right here. Now let's go to the identity tab. Now, this is just information about the material that, that we can encode. Look at this one, for example, or this. So let's go back here. No need to do anything. Let's go to graphics. Here in graphics, let's first focus on the shading. Let's hide this for now. Here in shading, you can see that we can change the colors here. So let's make it purple, for example. Okay, of course, transparency is, well, easily understood, but let's use this also. Apply and okay. Now, let's take this floor, for example. If I change this floor material to the one that we made, which was home test, this one, if I press okay and okay, that should happen. Now, let's try the transparency one. If I make it at least 90%, you will see the difference. Or here. Okay, apply, okay. There you go. It's transparent, just as like the word it says. Okay, now let's do this again properly. And I almost forgot. That coloring only affects shading and consistent color. Let's try it one more time without the transparency. Let's move this to zero and let's make it red. Apply and OK. There. If I make this to a hidden line, it's not shown as well as in wireframe or in realistic. But if I were to go to consistent color, then shaded, that's where it's affected. All right. Now, let's go back to Manage again. Materials, this one. Let's do Surface and Cat Pattern this time. Now, these two are somewhat difficult to explain in words, so instead, I will make a spear and show you. But for now, let's make a pattern for it, something very distinct. Let's use a square one for Surface. Let's use diamonds for cut. This one. All right. Now I will make a spear so that we can see it properly. For now, ignore what I'm doing and I will explain this in some future videos. I just want to make a spear for everyone to see. We need to make the wall as our host. Hmm. Right. 
Okay, there's a spear. But wait, not yet done. All right, and now it's outside. Okay, now let's add the pattern to it. Let's go back to Edgar Wolf. Nope. Where's the material? This one. Let's use the same material before, which is this. So remember, this is the foreground squares, while as the cut are diamonds or cross hatches. So if I press OK, now we'll focus the section box on this one. You know what? Let's remove the color as well. It's very difficult to see. Let's make it gray. Okay. Now, if you press BX or custom box, it will revolve the section box the section box around the certain element. Oops, sorry. Okay, again. And since we hit the section box earlier, let's go back to VV annotation section box. Here it is. All right. So as you see, that's the surface pattern. If I were to make a cut like so. The cut pattern shows. See that? So if I do it again like this, there's the difference between surface and cut. Huh. It looks like a dead star. <laughs> anyway, okay. So um, let's turn off the section box once more. And let's look at this in plan view. But I need to put it down a little bit here. Now, ground floor. As you see here, we can see it completely without any cut happening to it because without any obstruction, we can see its surface from the plan. Now, let's try this in section view as well. Let's move it here a bit. Section view is here and like this. So, if I move this, what? If I move the section here, and it's inside our view range, right click, go to view. We can see it as a whole or rather the surface pattern. Now let's do a window tile. Okay, here. If I were to move it here, making a cut, the cut pattern should show. See, immediately shows, right? So, that's how I can properly explain the difference between surface and cut pattern. Just simply put, the surface pattern, or rather its outer pattern, is like its skin, whereas the cut is, well, what's going to look like on the inside if we put something like a section view or a section box that runs across it. So next up is the foreground and the background. Let's do this in 3D view. Let's close this one. All right, so let's go back to this one. Edit. So much like its name suggests, it's a foreground and a background. Let's put this to example. For foreground, let's let's leave it as is. Background, oops, sorry, this one. Let's use a concrete hatch. Let's give this a color like red, for example. Let's hide this. All right, apply, okay. There. Notice how the cut pattern wasn't showing, right? Because nothing is being cut. What you see is the foreground line pattern and the background hatches. Next, let's use a solid fill for the foreground and the same hatch for the background. And we will see the difference. So again, here, graphics, here's the foreground. So this remains at ease. Let's use a solid fill. Drafting, solid fill. Let's use something that can obviously cover up the red color. Let's use a blue one. There, you can't see the red hatch anymore. Now, let's try doing it vice versa, wherein we will use a hatch for foreground in a solid fill for the background. So let's click this again, go to edit type. 
Now let's do it the opposite way. Solid fill for this one and let's make it red. Here, let's just use this one. Apply and OK. There you go. We can now see the foreground and we can also see the background. Simply as the name suggests, it's very, it's very easily understood what it means. Lastly, I need to explain the pattern type. If we go back here, here in foreground, if you click this one, you will see a drafting and a model. This model only appears in foreground pattern. If I were to go to background, surface pattern background, it's grayed out. If I go to cut foreground, also grayed out, cut background, nothing. This only appears in surface and foreground. So let's put that into action. Let's use model. Let's actually, let's make our own here. Let's make this tiling cross hatch 90 degrees. Let's make it 500 by 500. So this is a good way to use for tiling or carpets. Okay. Let's use red so it's very distinct. The background, let's go back to concrete just so we can see something. All right, that should be good enough. Okay, okay. There it is. Now, let's go back to ground floor plan. We don't need this anymore. And this one as well. Now, to fully explain what drafting pattern and model pattern is, first up, this line, the red line, is a model pattern. The hatches behind it, or rather this triangle stuff behind it, is the drafting pattern. Now, the drafting pattern actually has a fixed size relative to the sheet or its scale. So if I change this, you will see the drafting pattern change as well. See that? Every time I change something, it changes, but the model pattern doesn't change no matter what I use. So that's one of its difference. Also, if you press tab continuously, the focus changes to the model pattern. We can actually move it using the move tool. If I were to do this and click it here or using move, we can actually move it to where we want it to. We can also drag it as you see. Next, we can also create dimensions using the model pattern as our reference. So let's zoom out dimension. from wall to any pattern here and here as well. We can also rotate this model pattern. So tab, select a line here. As you see, we can rotate it as well. And lastly, we can use it as our align reference. So undo, let's say I can align it to the wall and here as well. I can also use it as my alignment reference. So if I click this and click this brick wall right here, the brick wall is going to move to this one. There. And because we can move and align its patterns, it's a very good practice to use different, fro different flooring per room, not like what I did here. I lazily just put one floor for everything. But there's a reason for that. Don't forget that. This is actually a floor slab, not a finished flooring. Thus, the reason why it's only one piece of floor. Of course, we will do that in the next video where we will be putting different floors in different room. So for now, let's put back everything to the way it was. Let's delete these dimensions. Let's put this back here. and change this back to the way it was originally. Or rather, let's use a generic one, concrete.
right. Okay, so that's it. We're done for this video. In the next one, we will be doing finishes. So for questions and suggestions, please do comment below. And if you enjoyed this or find this tutorial helpful, you can support me by liking and subscribing. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you in the next video.